welcome back, welcome back. I'm going to show you guys how to install Raspbian OS from scratch using the Raspberry Pi imager. I'm going to plug my memory stick or my memory card into my computer now. So you should hear the Windows connection sound. Perfect. That window popped up straight away. So this is already a memory card I was using before. I'm not going to continue using this OS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down. I'm going to open Raspberry Pi Imager. So this is the one that you can download directly from the website. This is Raspberry Pi Imager version 2.0.0. So this is the newest one. I think this is still in beta. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi five for this project. So what I'm going to be doing is I simply choose the operating system based on the device I have. So if you have a Raspberry Pi one, two, three, four, five, you choose it based on that. There are other options, but I'm going to stick to the mainline ones for now. So for me, I'm going to go to Raspberry Pi five. I've already downloaded this image. So meaning I've used it before. So it's already cached it on my system, meaning that there's a file downloaded somewhere on my computer that I don't actually know where it is. If anyone does know where it is, please let me know. It's downloaded or cached on my PC. So when I go to write this, it does not need to download it again. It simply uses the same image that was downloaded before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that first one that says Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit. Click on that one. You can go 32 bit as well. You can go Raspberry Pi OS legacy 32 bit but i wouldn't recommend it if you're trying to do something like web servers stuff i would recommend scrolling down going to raspberry pi os other and choosing raspberry pi os light 64 bit if you look at the file size here it says 487 megabytes if i go back on this and i show you this one here uh, it's roughly 1.2 or 1.3 gigabytes so roughly three times larger just the graphical user interface so that's the windows icons menus pointers that stuff takes up an extra roughly 800 megabytes so again if you're going to be running a server i would recommend using the the light version. I'm going to go to Raspberry Pi OS here, that first one, click next. Uh, it's already detected my memory card. So I've got a 32 gigabytes in there. So I've left this box checked so that it does not pick up the drive inside my laptop or my PC where I have Windows installed. You ideally want to have this done. I've never actually accidentally written to my Windows drive, but I don't know what would happen. I wouldn't recommend it. It might just mess up your entire system. So I've left it checked so it does not show that drive. I'm going to click on next from here. For the customization part, I'm going to skip all of this because I like to do this personally when I set the system up because I like to plug it in and make sure everything's working. However, if you're going to be SSHing into this, meaning that you're not going to have this plugged into a um, monitor, it's best to set everything up from here. I found that in version 2.0.0, these settings don't stick and when I turn the Raspberry Pi on for the very first time I have to go in and set some of this stuff anyway. So if you want this to 100% work, maybe use the older version of Raspberry Pi Imager. So I'm going to go to skip customization for now because I don't need any of this stuff here. I'm going to simply click on write. It's going to pop up with this window here telling me it's going to clear all my data. I, I understand. Erase and write. There's no other option that would work. So you have to click on this option here and then simply wait for it to finish. After a fresh install, I'm booted into my Raspberry Pi. The only thing I've done so far is I've set up Raspberry Pi Connect so I can link to it directly from my Windows PC. So if anyone's wondering, I'm using my Windows PC now to connect over the internet to my Raspberry Pi 5 so I can do everything from my Windows PC. It makes my life a lot easier. If you want to learn how to do this, there's going to be a video in the description about how to connect to Raspberry Pi Connect. The very first thing I want to do after that is I want to go to my terminal window. Let me zoom in as much as I can. And I'm going to type in sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade. So sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade. This should go ahead and install all the packages I need first and foremost. So I want to make sure that even though this is a fresh install from the Raspberry Pi imager, it might still need some updating. So I'm going to press enter here and it's going to go ahead and download every single thing I need. Oh, I made a mistake. Not sud, but sudo. That might help. The next thing I need to do is to add the Halio test repository. This command will do it. These commands will be in the video description as much as I can add there. However, on my website, I'm going to have a blog post that goes through step by step every single thing you need to do, every file you need to download and every command you need to put in to get everything working. Once I get it working, you have the same information. I'm then going to update all packages again and do a reboot. So I'm going to update everything. Once this is finished, I'm going to do a sudo reboot now. Sudo reboot allows you to reboot the system. I think it lasts, um, it waits for like 30 seconds or a minute. I don't remember exactly how long it waits, but sudo reboot now so sudo reboot now that reboots the system immediately the next thing you're going to need to do is to install docker so i'm going to show you step by step what you need to install because this won't simply work in python 3.13 you're going to have to use docker as a web ui the first thing i'm going to do is remove existing docker packages so this command is going to help me remove every single thing that i don't need because i'm going to need to install this from fresh next i'm going to install docker's repository the apt repository these first series of commands are going to add docker's official gpg 
key from here. Next, I'm going to add the repositories to app sources. And once again, I'm going to do sudo apt update. Next, I'm going to install and run the Docker service just to see if everything's working OK. When this window comes up, I am going to click yes or why. So the download size is going to be 17, let's say 80 megabytes. And the space needed to after it extracts everything and installs it is going to be 355 megabytes. So I'm going to click yes on here. This might take some time depending on how fast your internet is and how well your Raspberry Pi is being cooled as well. Because the hotter it gets, the slower it's going to move. It is going to try and throttle to try and protect the chip if it gets too hot. But mine is being cooled very well at the moment. So I'm just going to go yes. This should be relatively quick. Next, I'm going to go ahead and start Docker. This is going to run a quick hello roll test. Next, I need to install the drivers and runtime for the Helio or Llama server. This command will do everything at once. Then I need to do a sudo reboot after this. This one is going to have a download size of 471 megabytes. The space needed after install is going to be 1.3 gigabytes. So 1,313 megabytes roughly. I'm going to press yes. And again, this is fully dependent on your internet speed and how cool your Raspberry Pi is going to be during this. If it gets too hot, it's going to slow down. This is why I highly recommend having a decent cooler on there and the heatsink as well. Then I'm going to do a sudo reboot now. This part is where it gets a bit sticky. So I'm going to put all the links in the description. This is the first GitHub link. And you're going to have to install something called Helio Model Zoo Gen AI. But before you can install this, the instructions tell you that you have to go to another web page, which is Helio RT. That's a prerequisite of installing Helio Zoo. So I'm going to go to Helio RT. And down here, it's going to take you to another page to install something else. So what I think I'm going to do, because I'm logged in and I have everything I need, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links to each file you need to download. You will have to create an account for the Helio website. And once you do that, you should be able to go ahead and download all the files you need. And then from there, I'm going to show you how to install the files. So let me quickly repeat that. I'm not going to be able to host the files on my website because I don't want to have any copyright issues. What I'm going to do instead is simply point you to the file on the Helio website. You will need to create a Helio account, a developer account. But once you do that, you should be able to download all the files you need. So here it says we need to download three files. The first file you're going to need to download for the Raspberry Pi is going to be the Helio RT PCI Express driver. That's one file. The second file you're going to need is the Helio RT platform architecture file. That's file number two. And the third one is going to be the Pi Helio RT for the platform architecture and install Python version. So the first thing you actually need to do is go and check the Python version you have, because I think these two files remain the same, the first two, but the third one is going to be different. So to quickly double check that, let me, I'm going to open my terminal window and I'm assuming this is going to be Python 3, 10, 3, 11, 3, 12. So I'm going to go Python minus minus version. When you press enter, well, I've got 3.13 actually. So that tells me the version of Python I have. So I'm going to need to choose Python 3.13. Please keep in mind that if you need to download a Python wheel, so that's a WHL file, you have to have the same WHL file as the Python version you have. For example, I've got Python 3.13 installed on my system. So the wheel I use, the WHL file must also be Python 3.13. Once you get to the website and you create the account and login, you're going to go to where it says hey, Helio 10H at the top. Choose Helio RT down here. Because we're using the Raspberry Pi 5, 5, yeah, we're going to choose ARM64 because it's an ARM processor. We're going to use Linux. So just to confirm, these are the two main files you need at the moment. So Helio RT 5.2.0, ARM64. You need Helio RT PCI Express Driver 5.2.0, all.deb. These are the two files you need. I've downloaded these on my Windows PC. You need to find a way to transfer them onto your Raspberry Pi. You are allowed to obviously download this directly onto your Raspberry Pi. That's not what I've done because I'm remoting into my Pi. But if you download it directly there, follow from the next step. From the website, we have the option to install only the PCI Express driver, or we can do the installation with the PCI Express driver. I'm going to go ahead and do that because I don't know what's already on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one instead. I'm, this is the command here. You can follow the instructions when I put the link in the description, or you can simply copy my instructions if you left the file name exactly the same. So if you left the file name the same, feel free to copy the commands from my website and it should work perfectly fine for you. By the way, I've put my files in my downloads folder. So when you need to change the directory, go to downloads if that's where you saved your files. So I'm back on my Raspberry Pi. And what I need to do, I need to do ls to see where I am. This is my directory at the moment that lists all the files and directories that are present where I am now. I need to go to cd and then do downloads that's going to allow me to change my directions so that's what cd means cd downloads 
and press enter but before i do that what you can do if you're not entirely sure is type cd space capital d o w press tab on your keyboard this is the sh um, the key right above the caps lock button this will allow you to do auto complete and what that does is simply completes it based on what is in that current directory when i press enter to go into that directory i'm going to do ls that again that means list everything in this directory it's going to give me four files they're all red so what I'm going to do before I continue is I'm going to actually, I'm going to make sure that I set these files to be executable. So you need to do the change of mod. So I'm going to do chmod plus x, then the name of the file. So I'm going to do halio underscore. That's the first one. Then I'm going to do ls again. Now that should turn to green now. Yep, perfect. I'm going to do that for each one of them. I'm going to do one at a time. I can do everything at once, but I'm trying to make this process as simple as possible. I'm going to do chmod again plus x, then the next one. All right, so I've done all of them. So now now when I do LS, they should all be green. You might not need to do this, but I'm just allowing these files to be executables. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and install what I need. So I'm going to go clear, C-L-E-A-R, press enter. That's going to essentially wipe everything off I've done. Then I'm going to go ahead and paste this command. This command is going to install both the Helio RT and the PCI Express driver. Fingers crossed this works. I'm going to press enter and let's see what happens. I got this error. Not sure what caused it, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and do some research, try and fix it, come back and tell you exactly what the fix was so chat gpt has suggested i remove the conflicting drivers so that's what this command does i will put this on the website as well if you for some reason have the same error i'm going to press enter here let's see what happens i'm going to go ahead and do a cleanup so sudo apt auto remove minus y that's all finished i'm going to try and install everything again i'm going to simply press up on my keyboard to go to my most recent commands then i found it i'm going to simply press enter it seems to be doing something so i'm going to let this finish well, that was very quick. Now I need to reboot. So I'm going to do sudo reboot now. Press enter. Wait for that to come back up. Then the last thing for me to do is to check if the installation worked. Perfect. I've got my Helio device there. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the following steps on the website. The next thing for me to do is to install PyHelio RT in a new environment because this is a brand new install for me. This is going to be a new environment. So this is the command you will need. That's the generic command. This is a command you'll need if you're using version 4.17.0. However, because we have version 5.2.0 at the time of making this video this number here wherever it's located in this command for example here you need to change it to 5.2.0 you need to also change this number here where it says python 3.10 wherever you find 3.10 this needs to be changed to 3.13 for example my version of my python or my pc is 3.13 so i need to change this number to 3.13 there are two other instances of cp310 so i'm going to change this one here to cp3 let me zoom in actually sorry i'm going to change this i'm going to change this to cp313 and this also to cp313 that should work fine now that i've finished installing alio rt I need to go to the website and download Helio Model Zoo Gen AI. So again, this is going to be in the description. Let me copy it now. And I'm going to download this file, transfer it onto my Raspberry Pi and continue from there. So now I have that in my download folder. I'm going to go ahead and run this command here. So I'm going to go back to my terminal window. I'm going to do sudo dpkg minus i. Then I'm going to do Helio underscore gen. I'm going to press tab on my keyboard to do autocomplete. Then I'm going to press enter. That seems to have installed okay. No errors. The next thing I need to do is to run the Helio Helio Alama command. This is going to start the server, the Helio Alama server. Press, en press enter. Yep, that's running okay. Made a mistake. I need to now open another terminal window. So a different one. Let me try and make this big as well. And from here, let me try and hide it with this one. I need to run this command to get a list of possible models I can download. So I'm going to press enter on this. This is a list of all the models that we can download. So I've got DeepSeek here, Llama, Quen, Quen, and Quen. So different versions of Quen. This command is going to allow me to download the Quen 2 1.5b model. I'll put all the different models that you can download as of January 2026 on the on the blog post of my website. So you can go, on, go there, copy and paste it in, and you should be able to download everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and download every single model available just so I can test different things. So I'm going to press enter on this one to start the download and install this next command is going to allow me to download DeepSeek r1 this next command is for installing llama 3.2 this one allows quen 2.5 coder to be installed and this is the last one so now everything is installed i'm going to send a query to the llm using a post request now after i do this and i know it's working i'm going to set up a front end a web ui so that i can see it like a nice gemini or chat gpt interface or rather than a terminal so this is just going to convert to french the cat is on the table this is the test command i got from the raspberry 
Raspberry Pi guys. So let's see if it works. All right, that didn't seem to work. So I'm going to try another model as well. I'm going to paste this in. And this is from the DeepSeek R1. So I did get an output, but what I'm going to do before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and install the web UI, show you how to do it, show you all the commands you need, and then try and make sense of all of this. Because honestly, this is confusing my brain at the moment because there's just too much text on screen for me to read it quickly. I'm going to try and add a user to the Docker group so that I don't need to keep using sudo because it tells me a permission is denied. But I know that if I use sudo, it might just work, but I don't want to have to do that every single time so this command here should help me do that so this is the first one this is going to refresh it now i'm going to run this command again okay that's downloading some stuff let's see if this works this one is 91 megabytes 921 over here 333 here so this is going to take a while for some of you guys this again is all dependent on how fast your internet is mine is quite decent as you can see so mine is going to be finishing quite quickly but if yours is slower then expect this to take longer this next command is going to start the service and it should take roughly 30 to 60 seconds to start so i'm going to leave this run in and then try in about a minute or two i've also left the helio olama server in the background running so that should be fine this command here is going to allow me to view the progress so i can see when it's finished be sure that when you copy and paste in the url you remove the https it should only be http when i pasted mine and it had https so it seems like it's working fine so i'm going to go to get started so this is running directly on the raspberry pi i've entered my details to create a local account so i'm going to create admin account the first time you sign in or the first person that signs in that's always going to be the admin account first thing you're greeted with is the change log i'm not going to read that at the moment i'm going to close this and I'm going to try and type something in here. So I have myself my local AI running on the Raspberry Pi 5 using the Helio 10H chip, which is baked into the Raspberry Pi AI Hat Plus 2. And because I installed all of those models previously, when I click on this arrow here next to where it says DeepSeek R1, I can choose from all the models I installed earlier. I didn't install this one, but I'm guessing there should be a way for me to use it, or this is just the default one. I'm going to go to DeepSeek R1 and just try to see what works. So nice, simple question. What is 20 times 20? Should give me 400. Let's see what I get. All right, that's not bad. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but the fact that I have this running locally on my system, I'm quite impressed by this. So Raspberry Pi again, thank you. Thank you so much for sending this across. This is going to get a lot of use. I've got four Raspberry Pis in my house at the moment. Raspberry Pi 400 running uh, my file server. Raspberry Pi 5 running this now. I'm going to use another Raspberry Pi 4 to run to run a VPN from my house and probably an ad blocker as well. But this is probably going to be the one that I play with the most because this is so cool. Let me try one more before I close this video off. Just as a mini benchmark, I'm going to ask it another question, but I'm going to time it this time to show you roughly how long it takes. So it looks like it converted this. It did give me a slight error here. When I copy this into Google Translate, it said the cow jump over the wall, not over the moon. So it does make a few mistakes. But again, you have different models that you can try out. What I'm going to do next is simply ask it another question and time it to show you guys roughly how long it takes to get something answered based on this specific model. I think in the next video, what I'm going to do is ask the same question to every single model to see which one's fastest and give you guys some numbers. What is the capital of Jamaica? So I'm going to send this and then I'm going to start this straight. Oh, wow. That was really quick, actually. Let me ask it another question. What is the city or the capital city of Jamaica? That's really quick. I, I mean, <laughs> under one second or roughly one second. That's not bad to answer these kind of questions. So let me ask it something a bit more difficult now. Let's see how much context it has. How long does it take to drive from Kingston to Montego Bay? That's not bad at all. Let's call it roughly 15 seconds. My timing's all off because I had to jump over to this one and reset it and do it so let's call this 15 seconds even though it says 12 here that's not bad anyways thank you guys for watching hopefully that was useful hopefully everyone could follow my instructions and install this properly the blog on my website is going to have all the information you need that you can copy and paste it i might even make a script so you can simply run that script but please 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 whatever script you download from any website not just mine always check the contents first my script is going to have run stack hub at the very top it's also going to have every single command you need to use so you can go ahead and double check it yourself against the installation instructions. It's just going to be the lazy way to do it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe.